Legal weed wins the illegal drug war. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. We've got that story plus some positive polls. But first, Robert Rauschenberg's Family Foundation brings copyright law into the 21st century. This story comes originally from Oregon Public Broadcasting from right here in Oregon, and they have a whole audio report which has some Portlandia connections I'll not get into right here. But the good news is, the iconoclastic artist Robert Rauschenberg was well known for pushing art world boundaries. He said he wanted to work in the gap between art and life, and so his works combined painting with everyday objects like magazine clippings and Coke bottles. We would call it multimedia now. His foundation now is pushing a new boundary, however, copyright law. That's why a buzz erupted in the art world when the Robert Rauschenberg Foundation announced it would expand its fair use policy. According to its announcement, it is the first artist-endowed foundation to ditch the permission fees and hoops for museums, scholars, artists, and the public. Rauschenberg himself drew early fame for his combines, which combined paintings and prints with found objects, including everything from magazine photos to taxidermied animals and Coca-Cola bottles. My father's work involved using images from newspapers and magazine and neckties that people design, said Christopher Rauschenberg, the late artist's son and president of the foundation. And I think as a foundation, how hypocritical it is it of us to say, no, this is ours. And interestingly enough, I didn't know this, Christopher Rauschenberg is actually based here in Portland, Oregon, and there are many Portland Art Museum connections to him and this story as well. And I think this is really in the spirit of the art of Rauschenberg, just like Negative Land or Girl Talk or like Emergency Broadcast Network said, information is free, there is hope. Fire one up for our cover story this week as legalizing cannabis has done what a trillion dollars and a 40-year failed drug war couldn't do. And that's take on the Mexican cartels. A newly released statistical report from the U.S. Border Patrol shows a sharp drop-off in cannabis captured at the border between U.S. and Mexico. The reduction in weed trafficking coincides with the dozens of states embracing cannabis use for both medical and recreational purposes. In fact, as the Washington Post reports, cannabis confiscations at the southern border have stumbled to the lowest point in over a decade to only a million and a half pounds. That's down from a peak of 4 million pounds in 2009. Consumers are also starting to see the difference. Cheap, low-quality Mexican cannabis, or dirt weed as they called it, has become almost impossible to find here in the states that have legalized, while prices for high-quality homegrown have steadily decreased. This is also good news for Mexico, which is deadlier than a 15-year-long hot war in Afghanistan with more dead, and it's... Pretty damn good news for Oregon right here as well. That story comes from activistpost.com, and again, it has a bunch of link, links and a bunch of research, which reminds me to tell you that everything we always say and play on these episodes will always be included down in the show notes. Our third and final story on this good news next week for March 7th, 2016, also comes from Activist Post, but really from Melissa Dykes at Truthstream Media, because she noted the poll showing Americans most afraid of the American government. Out of 88 potential horrors, a batch of 1,500-plus Americans were asked to rank in regard to their personal level of fear in 2015. Americans are more afraid of their own corrupt government than anything and everything else on the list, including death, rape, murder, nuclear war, pandemics, terrorism, zombies, and even clowns, which reminds us of St. Carlin's piece about things to watch out for. You can see all that research from Chatham University, and there are some easy kind of infographics that drive the points home. But one of the lesser mentioned parts of this research was what that fear has made some of those people do sometimes. Like, send your kids to a private school, bought a gun, got a home alarm system, but by far the biggest motivator motivating your fears to do something voting for a particular candidate out of fear. Does that sound familiar? 
Let's look at some good news next week headlines submitted to us by you out there using hashtag good news next week. This charming Cobb home was built by hand for less than 250 American dollars, totally off the grid. That's submitted to us by our buddy James Corbett at Corbett Report. Canadians live longer and prosper now by spocking fives. Canadians defacing their currency to turn it into Spock. UK man wins case after refusing to pay for BBC, citing the 9-11 cover-up. Edmund de Rothschild in Geneva, targeted by a French criminal probe. A 13-year-old invents a free energy device for 15 bucks. That submitted to us by at Dylan Saccoccio, who also writes books. Trying to get out of a parking ticket, there's a robot for that as well, finding where the meters are and aren't. UK government's changes to freedom of information requests blocked. That's submitted to us at Ray Vahey. And swiping a priceless antiquity with a scanner and a 3D printer. That brings us full circle on this Good News Next Week episode as we began with free and open art for everybody. And we end that way as well. We find good news where we can. Submit your Good News Next Week story via Twitter using hashtag Good News Next Week. Or you could just email me, james, at mediamonarchy.com. And we would love your support at mediamonarchy.com slash support, where you can use PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, and even a P.O. box to help keep Media Monarchy going and growing. This has been Good News Next Week. I'm James Evan Pilato for mediamonarchy.com, reminding you, as always, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. <laughs>